Did you know that 90% of all the apps in the iOS store are zombie apps? No one is using them. And so when we build out MVPs, when we build out apps, first products that we wanna launch in the market, we have to be incredibly careful about the way that we do that so we don't fall in that same category. What's up everyone? Welcome back to my channel. This is my startup studio. My name's Christian Pevarelli, the co-founder of We Are No Code. We teach founders how to build startups without coding. And this channel will give you all the tricks and tips that you need to go ahead and build that startup. And if you haven't already, please like, subscribe. It really warms our heart and it allows us to progress in our mission to empower the next generation of entrepreneurs. Welcome back to week six of the program. In this week, we're gonna be talking about building your MVP, leveraging no-code tools. So this is for non-technical people. The first thing to understand is that the most important thing about your MVP is its ability to deliver the value to an end customer, right? We are not necessarily wanting to geek out too, too much on the features at first. We wanna really understand the benefits, the outcome that that individual is looking to receive. If you're able to nail that and really deliver that value, you're gonna have a happy customer. And so we really want to not talk too, too much about the features at first, focus on the benefits that individual is looking for, and then we're backward engineering that to figure out which features would deliver at least the core of that value. You won't be able to deliver all the value in your first MVP. So the aim is to build 80% of the value with 20% of your time. And that's why it's called an MVP, minimum viable product. It could be an app, it could be a platform, it could be fully automated, it could be only half automated. Remember, the key here is to deliver that value to the end customer and the feature set which gets them there is a totally different story. There are probably several different features and several different products that could actually deliver that value. Now, before jumping into no code, let's talk a little bit about how we wanna approach building the MVP. If you look at this picture, this is the way that you would not want to build your MVP. Why? Because if we're trying to solve the transportation problem, the value someone is looking for is to get from one place to the other quicker, right? And so if you build two wheels, that's not really going to help that customer get to somewhere quicker. If you build half a car, you're still not solving the problem. It's only until you reach the final iteration of that product, the full car, that you're able to deliver the value to a customer. So instead the approach we're gonna to use to build out MVPs is going to be this, where we can see the first iteration is to build a skateboard that is quicker than walking, then a bicycle, then a little scooter, and then you know we're gonna go on to building that full car. But each one of those iterations is actually well-suited in solving the problem. We've just over time improved the product, right? So we're actually creating better and better products that solve the problem better and better, right? Because we all know that a skateboard is slower than a car. So a car is much more expensive, but it solves the problem way better. And so we want to kick off with a skateboard and then we want to move along and build more and more complex apps, complex software and MVPs that are increasingly better at delivering that value and solving that problem. And why do we take this approach? Well, because if we were to build the whole car, it would cost us so much money and there's still a lot of risk in that. We could build the entire car and realize that that's not what people were actually looking for or it's not delivering that value. So we really wanna take it iteration by iteration where each one of those solves a problem and people are happy to pay for. Now I wanna jump into several different stacks that you might be looking at when you're building your startup. And this is really going to depend on what you are building and your experience level as well. So there are certain stacks that are best suited for certain builds. When I say stack, what I mean is a tool set. So some of these tools are all-in-one builders. Others, you can use a combination of tools to build a product. We're gonna find the best way for you to do that cost-effectively and quickly as well. Now, the reason why we wanna work with no-code tools is because they are inherently way quicker to build with. Anything that would take, let's say six months, nine months in code might take six to nine weeks to build in no-code. And so it really allows us to play into this iterative process when we really are experimenting and delivering features based on what we believe are the requirements of the customer. But once we hit the market with those, we're gonna get a different reality, we're gonna get feedback, and that's gonna allow us to go back to the drawing board and either adapt that product, build a completely new product so that we can deliver to the customer the value that they're looking to pay for. So with no further ado, let's jump into some of these no-code stacks. Now, in week three of the program, I taught you a little bit more about Webflow. So Webflow is an incredible frontward facing builder, which means that you can build websites, you can build blogs, you can build all the marketing pages. And Webflow is also starting to develop deeper functionalities and they really have a bright future in the no code space. They're one of the key players and we expect to see a lot more from them. If you attach 
Webflow to a couple other tools such as MemberStack, you can actually create membership areas or SaaS platforms, software as a service platforms. And so attaching it with MemberStack will allow you to manage the users, will be able to create all the logins, credentials, all of those additional features that you're looking for, even accept payments. Now, another app that we can connect is a database that is called Airtable. Now, this is kind of like Excel, except on crack. And so now we're moving towards a stack that we call the WAMS stack, W-A-M-Z. And so we're using Webflow as the front end and the CMS. Then we're using member stack as the membership management. And then we're using Airtable as the database. And subsequently, we might be using a little bit of Zapier. So what is Zapier? Zapier is what they call the glue of the internet. So it allows you to connect different technologies together. For example, you would send information that came in through a form straight to an email marketing service and have a drip campaign come from that. So Zapier is going to be an important part of the stack as well. This is pretty much limited to creating membership websites and SaaS platforms. And it's one of the stacks we might be interested in using. Now, the other option that we have is Bubble. Now, Bubble is much deeper in terms of the functionalities that you can build. You can build apps like Twitter, you can build apps like Airbnb, you can build apps like Netflix, WhatsApp, and many, many other software companies. Now, Bubble is incredibly powerful, but it also takes a lot longer to learn. So there is a longer learning curve. And so all that power comes at a cost when it comes to learning the platform. So when we talk about more complex functionalities, what we mean is that you can tap APIs. What is an API? Well, essentially it is a connection between an outside source of information that you can bring in. That could be a machine learning algorithm that's either developed by yourself externally or by Google, Microsoft, lots of the other other large tech firms that have an API. You could bring in stock market data. You could bring in weather data. APIs are really just about connecting to exterior information or exterior features. So it allows you to power that app with even more powerful features that you might be able to. And sometimes you don't even have to build them yourself. Bubble also has better database capabilities. And in general, they are an all-in-one builder. So you can build more complex workflows and that can be interesting based on what you're trying to build. Now, another option that we have is called Softer. Now, Softer has a shorter learning curve and it allows you to build SaaS platforms. It allows you to really build a number of different platforms, web apps that does not require coding and where the learning curve is much lower. Now, usually it uses another database. So it might use Airtable, but you could also use Google Sheets or another one to be able to build that database as part of it. It really focuses on the front end experience. And so you might wanna check into that one to see if it's the right fit for you. Then we have others like Glide or Adalo that allow you to build mobile apps. Adalo has deeper functionalities, Glide, is a little bit simpler, but has limited capabilities. And so you really wanna check these two out, see which one might fit for what you're trying to build specifically. And usually they're quite straightforward around the use cases that you can build leveraging these different tools. So look into the use cases that they have on their website, see whether or not what you're trying to build is similar to one of those. And that'll be a great indicator of whether or not that platform will be a good build for the first build. Now remember, you should not be tied to anyone forever. Understand that you might have to rebuild your product as you go along, right? Or you might mature out of one platform and suddenly want to get to another one. A common thing we hear in no code is no code is not scalable. Well, yes, it is. You can scale it to hundreds of thousands of people, but the most difficult thing is to go from zero to one. And regardless, by the way, if it's built with code or no code, at some point you're going to have to rebuild either the entire app, the entire platform, or migrate to low code. There are so many different options but at that point, when you have hundreds of thousands of users, it's a very good problem to have. So for you as an early stage founder, you should not be worried about scalability. Trust me. Now, there are a couple ways that we can actually fast track our journey when building MVPs. The first one is that a lot of these platforms have templates. So if we find a template that fulfills 80% of the features that we're looking for, we might want to leverage that as a first way to build our product. Bubble has awesome templates for marketplaces like freelancer marketplaces or Airbnb, all 
types of templates. Webflow also has clonables where you can grab certain sections and put them together. And they oftentimes have awesome templates in their showcase area that may fit exactly what you're trying to do. Now again, we're really just trying to get 80% of the value. So don't try to get every feature that you had imagined. Try to determine what that core value is and build that first. Now, another option that you have is to buy before build. Now, for example, if you built the entire front end with Webflow and then you found a white label solution that can deliver the back end, then you might be willing to pay 30, $100 a month at first to be able to deliver that value. And then over time, you could build that entire section out yourself. The idea is we wanna go quick and we want to be able to deliver that value as a key priority. So if you wanted to create an online course, you could literally just use a platform like Teachable at first. And then you could build your own platform when that made sense, when you had proven demand, and when the risk of your startup was way lower and you already have first paying customers, so you have resources to invest in that build. Now, last point is that you can combine some of these platforms. So we've also seen people build a front end in Webflow because it's so beautiful in terms of the kind of experiences that you build in terms of the frontward facing UI UX, which is the customer interface or uh, experience, and then building the more complex side of the web app, leveraging Bubble. And then you can just connect both. So when someone signs up, they are suddenly in a Bubble app and it makes an experience which is totally seamless where you don't realize that you're switching platforms at all. And we highly recommend that you learn some of these tools because even if you are to hire someone to help you, you need to know how to manage those people you need to take responsibility for the technology when you are building a technology business. And guess what? Every business is a tech startup these days. Everything requires a platform or some type of technology. So you can't just ignore technology as an entrepreneur these days. You have to learn the basics and no code is the best way to do that. Now, one thing I wanna leave you with is that your product will evolve. So don't be scared to start with something simple, which is a little bit less than what you expect it to be, and then build as you go. Because there are much bigger things going on right now where you might be building the totally wrong product. So that's the first hump we wanna get over before we go into building even more and more features. I have so many horror stories of people building the wrong product, spending hundreds of thousands of dollars, hiring amazing coding agencies or the best no coders and still building things that no one wants. So don't be that person. And if you click here, you'll see additional content from this series on how to build your startup without code. Thanks for watching. See you guys next time. Smash the like, subscribe, and please turn on that bell so that you get notified every time we release a video. Thanks again and have an awesome one. Let's go.